So Everybody. that's about a 35 gallon water tank. And each one of these drums, there's 10 or 11 drums in here. They're, they're all full of water. This tank gets heated up by the fire and it circulates through all of these drums and then comes back. And I only start it up if the temperature is going to be like below 25. If it's going to be above 25 degrees, I let the torpedo heaters over here make up the couple of degrees difference and they don't use much at all unless it goes below 25. Yeah, that's a big long bench. How long is the bench again? 25 feet? Uh, it's about 25 feet. And I added a backswing to it because the chimney was getting about 150 degrees. Oh. And so I added another 10 feet by extending it, making a loop, coming back. So it added about 10 to 12 feet. And now the generally the pipe is about 110, 115 degrees. So the rest of the heat is getting absorbed by the, the mass here. Yeah, that's really, the, I like how you did yours. This is really awesome with the rocks now on on this right here you say uh, you burn you burn these uh, eight foot sticks right here and how long will, will it take for them to burn down in it depends on the thickness of the sticks you know some of them are really thin and I have to come in about every hour okay and the only problem that you have with these mass stoves at least that I have when the sticks burn down, they start building up coals down in the chamber. There. And you start getting back burning. And then, if you're not careful, it'll start burning back up the sticks because it passes a point where the draft will suck the fire down. So what I do is, uh, periodically, I'll take my little register out. I got this stick. And I'll just shove all the coals down into the fire chamber. And that, uh, that keeps them from building up in there. This I adjust. I made the opening here too big. Because if you're not here to watch it constantly, all those coals will build up fast. So I only fill it about half full. I put maybe a dozen of these sticks in there, six on each side, and uh, it'll burn down with small sticks like this in an hour, it'll burn them down. But if I use the thicker ones, you can go as long as two hours. Yeah. And this is, this is new up here, I see from the last time that you put a gasket here, uh, and, and you put a steel top on, that's pretty awesome. The fire wasn't burning right. And so I drilled a hole in the top to see what was going on in there. And the chimney, the original chimney I had inside, the riser burned out at the bottom and just tilted over. So I cut out the top. I rebuilt the riser using fire bricks. And then I got some of that uh, stove door gasket. And it comes, it's a little kit that comes with adhesive. And I just glued it to the rim of the original drum. The sides of the drum were in fine shape. I laid the uh, plate on top of it. And just the weight of the plate and 30, 35 gallons of water. That's all it took to seal it. So that's... Uh, that worked out good. Where do you where do you bleed the air out? I mean, if you, is it right here? Is this your? Uh, no, that's a safety blow off. It's not really necessary. But on each drum, if you look on the back, 
Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a little bleeder valve that they have those on radiators. On radiators that are hot water system radiators. Yeah. And uh, okay. generally, I, it'll build up to about five or six pounds. And these plastic drums are supposed to be able to handle about 15 pounds. Oh yeah, well you haven't had any problems yet. No, I haven't had any problem at all. How many, there's one, two, three. There's six, six. on this side and five on the other. So it's about 600 gallons of water in here. They seem kind of short. Are they buried down a little bit? Or? Yeah, they're sunk into the ground. There's about three inches of mulch in here. Okay. <laughs> I don't like to pull weeds. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't blame you there. Yeah. Now, this banana bunch that's here, that's the dwarf red. And I don't know if it's because it got really cold in the past spring. But it did not do nearly as well as the other banana plants. It's yeah. only got, what, four hands of bananas on it. And the other ones had like about eight or ten hands. So, uh... Yeah, this, uh, the size of these leaves you, you cut off here are just amazing. Uh, yeah, give it a... I actually have some here for you to take home. All right. <laughs> Yeah, that bench. I see where you added on to the bench, yeah. Right, the uh, chimney used to come straight up here, you know, an elbow and up. Yeah. So I added another two lengths and came back again. Now, when when uh, everybody's wanting to know, uh, when you got this thing going, how long does it have to burn before it reaches a temperature that'll actually start heating in the greenhouse if the temperature is going to go below 25 i start the fire in the morning mm -hmm. and i keep it running all day long while i'm around here you know come up here and reload it and by evening the water temperature in that tank is about a hundred degrees so there's 600 gallons of water in here that's about a hundred degrees mm -hmm. by nighttime. And if it goes down to 20, 25 degrees, the heaters may or may not start up like four or five o'clock in the morning. It depends mm. on how windy it is. Yeah. Because these hoop houses are not sealed tight, tight, tight. Okay. Uh, every year I work on them a little bit more and get them a little more efficient. Like on the, that's the north wall over there. Yeah, I see the new and insulation. I have, I have that plastic insulation with the aluminum reflector on it. Yeah. So that the sun comes in and heats that, and it helps heat up those drums on that side. And on this side over here, I only have two feet of that reflector, because this is the south side, and the sun heats up these drums a little bit, too. So what is what is the temperature? Say it's say it's uh, 25 degrees out there. What is your temperature? You know, in here when it's. I have it set so the minimum temperature is about 38. Okay, so it, at four or five in the morning, then your heaters kick on. So you know there, it's maintaining above 38 degrees right. in here bef until then. So that's pretty awesome. And I imagine if you were getting up at every hour and feeding that rocket mass you wouldn't have to <laughs> yeah well when it went down to about eight or ten degrees i actually stayed in here all night yeah and the heater still came on a couple of times but they use about a half a gallon per hour and when they did come on they didn't come on for more than about 10 minutes yeah and I have one set a couple of degrees lower than the other one, so if one of them should fail for whatever reason, the other one will pick up a couple of degrees cooler. And that's why you have the welding cloth? Yeah, the, right. I mean, the, they really don't send out sparks that are likely to cause a fire, but since I have so much mulch in here, yeah, 
I uh, like to be a little safe. It's like walking on a mattress in here. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, like I said, I don't like to pull up weeds, so. <laughs> well, this is incredible. And everybody's been asking about your, let me show you. Show going up through, you just have a little, a little place up there. Yeah, I, uh, I made a special plate that I bolted to one of the little crossbars there. And then I cut a hole in that plate for the chimney to slide through it. And the hole in the ceiling through the plastic is just big enough for the pipe to go through. Yeah. And uh, it never gets hot enough to damage the plastic. That's the way it is in my greenhouse. It's, I got it going, and I have a double barrel. You know it's blowing out hot smoke, but it never gets hot enough to melt even the plastic around it. Well, I hope this answers everybody's questions about about this uh, this greenhouse. This awesome greenhouse. I uh, can show them the little circulating pump over there again. Okay. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, this little pump I got on eBay. I put a filter in front of it just in case there was any trash in the water and filters never gotten dirty at all, ever. So uh, that little pump uses about 100 watts of electric and I leave it running continuously during the winter because any heat that builds up in, in the drums Get circulated around so they're all pretty much evenly heated. How about how much was that pump? I found that on eBay. It's about a hundred and fifty dollars. Well, let me show everybody what we've already been eating. We've been eating these kumquats, and you just eat the whole thing. He showed me you just eat the whole thing, and uh, they were actually good. But my lips are actually burning right now. I don't know why that is. I guess they're a little bit chapped. <laughs> It's an acidy, of course. It's citrus. Yeah, they're just but covered. This is only about half of what was on here because I come in here every day and eat four or five of them in the morning. <laughs> and they will last for months, and there's even a few that are still green. Oh, yeah. So I'll be eating these for at least another month before I run out. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for having us again. And, uh, Everybody, I hope y'all enjoyed this. Uh, Oni Ove Ocha means I love you, Hebrew. Later, guys.